Well, welcome to Living Hope Church Online this Easter Sunday. He is risen, he is risen indeed. Now, whether or not you've been eating chocolate eggs for breakfast, this Easter feels very different. Very different as we celebrate Easter while locked down in our homes. But government rules still enable us to provide care and help for others. You know, our role with Food Bank and Dudley Council Voluntary Services is expanding. You know, now we're delivering food, essentials, and little Easter chocolates to people who are unable to leave their homes. Uh, you know, throughout this week, it has been fantastic to see and hear positive reports of how we've been able to serve our local community, and especially people who are isolated on their own. I want to say a huge thank you to those of you who have set up standing orders and bank transfers this week to continue giving tithes and offerings and to those who donated specifically to help us create the hampers for families in our community, uh, particularly the women and children in the New Beginnings Women's Refuge. You know, it was great to see those thank you messages from our partners on social media this week. And a big thank you to Kelsey, who leads our community outreach work. Uh, and to everyone who has painted and packed and delivered this week. You know, we've made more than 150 home pack deliveries to families in our communities and a few of us in church. Uh, and we've made food deliveries to more than a dozen elderly residents on our Russell's Hall estate uh, who have reached out and asked for help. At the same time, uh, we've been able to post pictures created by our little stars, Stay and Play Children, uh, and we've been able to deliver them to regular attendees of our Monday coffee afternoon. Easter really is the greatest celebration of God's love and his sacrifice and his power. What a fantastic way of being able to celebrate and demonstrate God's love to others this week. It's been great to connect to each other using Zoom this week in our connect groups and for Good Friday. But please remember there are no connect groups this week, but do keep in touch with each other, especially at this time. It's a real privilege to serve with you all. Uh, it's a real privilege to worship with you all. So let's do that together. Let's celebrate as we worship this Easter Sunday morning. The Holy Son of God Despised by man Was crucified here Hung naked all to see His pain, his brokenness The shame of sin He took it all The Lamb of God Struck down by of my heart desire the beaten son of God stained by my sin surrendered all that finished was his cry his death the moment of amazing love he gave it all the son of God whose love is unspeakable who can call mighty Son of God descended to complete what had begun. Eternity was changed, the keys to death He took and in three days He won it all. The Son of Man Son of God, 
the truth unshakable. His resurrection power and love marked by the trophies on his hands. I'm justified. I now stand forgiven. Yeah. 
there will be books written about this. Documentaries made, history exam questions set, and yet living through history has not quite met my expectations. Hindsight robs uncertainty of its power, but no one tells you that in the midst of history making, uncertainty is queen. She holds sway over a kingdom untouched by hindsight, a place of half-expressed fears, misinformation parading itself as truth. And she fires questions like arrows that make wounds which we have no answers to soothe. How many? Why? When? Who? How are the jobless going to buy food? And it feels like I will be buried under a barrage of today's latest bad news, sitting at home with nothing better to do than scroll through the dreads of infections and deaths. But I cling on by my fingernails to the hope that this kingdom of uncertainty may be all I can see, but it is not all that there is. There is a deeper truth another kingdom of glory and of promise that I glimpse in morning sunrises over quiet spring streets, in plants growing from seeds on my balcony, life bursting from death in green cacophony, new shoots curling up from unpromising looking shells, light bursting out from darkness's deep wells. Yes, I choose to fix my eyes on this unseen kingdom, and when uncertainty threatens to rob me of believing, I cling on by my fingernails to a thread of the robe of the king who leapt into darkness, but rose, dripping with light and healing, and so knows both the depths of the darkness and the power of the light, the pain of suffering and the truth of sun rising over the world after the darkness of night. I choose to build my foundations in this unseen kingdom, so that even before this becomes a chapter in history, uncertainty's power cannot keep me. I belong to another kingdom, deeper than suffering, stronger than uncertainty, promising sunrise from darkness and from death, eternity. Hi everyone, happy Easter to you. You know, at the beginning of the year when we started to think about Easter and what this year would look like, I did not expect Easter Sunday morning to look like this, where we would be recording the message in this way and putting it out via Facebook and YouTube. And I did not expect to be sharing communion with you all on Good Friday via the platform that is Zoom. And some people were saying maybe Easter should be paused, put on pause for a while, maybe we should celebrate it a bit later on. So Easter has not been put on pause, however much of our lives have. But when life is put on pause, it gives us an opportunity to do something new. Some people have said that they were gonna learn the piano or learn a new language. I haven't been doing any of those things. But what me and my family have been doing is we've been going on walks together. We wouldn't normally do this. We've also been eating together every single day at lunchtime and for our evening meal. We wouldn't normally do that. So there's been some really good things come from this. But one day we were a little um, bored of our usual route around um, our estate where we live. And uh, we mentioned this to some friends and um, they dropped us a Google pin. They sent it to us and they said, you should try this place out. We just discovered it. It's right on our doorstep and we had no idea. And so we um, got Google Maps out and we headed towards this place, this new place that they told us about within walking distance of our house. And um, as we went walking down this path, this place of beauty just opened up to us. This nature reserve with pools, with hills to climb, with beautiful pathways, um, with trees overhanging on each side. An absolute idyllic place of beauty. You know, my life before lockdown maybe looked a lot like yours at breakneck speed, where life was just so busy and quite frenetic that 
I would just be going at pace all of the time. And so if someone had suggested to go to this nature reserve, to go for this nice leisurely walk, I wonder if I'd have even had the time to do that or made the time to do that or would have even wanted to do that. But this place and this walk has become a real blessing to us right now. And I'm so glad that we found this new pathway. And it got me thinking about our lives right now. And in lockdown, while life is on pause, could we discover some new places, some new things about ourselves? Would we be willing to consider some thoughts and ideas that maybe up to this point we've discarded or not been interested in. One of the things we learn about a global pandemic is um, that in these times the church thrives and, um, and I was wondering why that is but you know when um, I've been in conversations with people recently it's been really interesting so to hear people say who who would testify themselves to having no faith at all but they're saying you know what i'm finding that i'm praying more at this time and um, and others have been watching our online services for the first time they wouldn't normally set foot inside of church but however this has been a real comfort to some people who would say that they have no faith at all. But what we're finding is that people are discovering new paths, not just new physical paths like me and my family, but actually new spiritual paths towards God as well. I want to talk about a point in history where the world changed and it was a path that was walked by a man called Jesus who walked towards the cross and um, and he said he was doing this for people like you and for people like me um, for the whole world to know how much God loved them that he would send his only son Jesus to die on a cross for them and this path that he walked has created a pathway for us to walk should we believe in Jesus we can walk this path towards our Heavenly Father. We can experience eternal life, not just when we die, but we can experience a joy right now in the middle of suffering, in the middle of pain, in the middle of a global pandemic. We can know a joy and a peace like no other because of the path that Jesus walked on that day over 2000 years ago. Jesus is arguably the most influential person on the whole of history. And one of the things that I marvel at is that hundreds of years before Jesus was born, there are prophecies laid out in the Bible of this Jesus who would come. And what Jesus did was he fulfilled every single one of those prophecies that were written hundreds of years before by people who never met Jesus. As I have read the Easter story again, I read it maybe differently this time. With the global pandemic in mind, I realise that many of the feelings that Jesus felt and the disciples felt, maybe we would be feeling right now. You see, Friday was a day of pain. It was a day when Jesus felt pain, not just physical pain, but psychological pain. And the disciples, they felt grief and loss as Jesus was hung to this cross and died a most painful and gruelling death. And then the Saturday, this was a day of confusion. And I don't know um, about you, but these days are confusing days. And so the Saturday speaks into our confusion. And the Sunday, the Sunday is a day of joy. And um, the Sunday is a day when Jesus reveals himself to his disciples. And so I want us to look at these three days and see how they could speak to us on this Easter Sunday morning. One of the questions you might be asking right now is, what do I do on a day of pain? Well, when we look at Jesus and what he did, we look to Good Friday. Um, the most amount of pain that he had felt was that day because he died on a cross and experienced the worst form of torture and worst form of death. It was a death by suffocation and it wasn't just physical pain but also psychological pain as well. He experienced humiliation, he experienced betrayal and spiritual pain as well because the guilt of mankind rested on Jesus. As he hung there on the cross, every murder, every rape, when we think of the Holocaust, when we think of every child molestation, and 
And in that moment, he says these words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the thing that I notice about Jesus, first of all, is he was not afraid to express what he was feeling. Jesus, the greatest leader of all time, was vulnerable in his pain. And uh, in the lead up to the cross, when he knew what he was facing, he invites his friends to the Garden of Gethsemane and he says, come sit with me, come pray with me. And he, and he says these words of how he is feeling. He says, my heart is so overwhelmed. I feel like I am dying. And what Jesus does there is he's honest, but he also invites his friends into that as well. But here's the things with, thing with friends, as good as that is, sometimes friends can let you down. And sometimes friends don't have the same power to support you and sit with you in your pain. However, the next thing he does is he invites the presence of God and he prays to God. He reaches out to God in the middle of his pain. The Saturday was a day of confusion. It was a confusing day for the disciples because they had brought into this Jesus everything that he had told them. They had given up their livelihoods, left everything behind to follow this teacher, this rabbi. And instead, their dreams that day were dead and buried and in a tomb. This left the disciples confused. And I don't know if you're confused today by death, by grief, by um, the things that are happening. You know, we don't like confusion. It brings too many question marks. We don't have the answers. Nothing is neatly laid out in a nice box. It's very hard to understand. Jesus predicted what would happen in the day of confusion. He says in Mark 14, 27, he says, you will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And then later on in Matthew 26, verse 56, that exact thing happens. It says, then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Here's the thing, in the days of confusion and pain, it can cause us to flee. It can cause us to run from God. It can drive us away from God. You know, maybe you are disappointed with how things worked out. Maybe you tried church before and you experienced a pain that just drove you away from God and from those people. In these days of confusion, Jesus shows us what to do, to cling to the promises of God. We must never doubt in the dark what has been shown to us in the light. And Jesus, he said this before he was crucified. He said to his disciples, very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. It can be so confusing when we go through a personal train wreck, when we have thrown our all at something, when we have given our life to something or to someone, and then for it to turn into disappointment, to turn bleak, for all life to go from that situation. And um, it's in those moments that we can cling to one of the 7,000 promises in the Bible. We can place our hope in the truth of God's word. And uh, one of the promises is from Isaiah 61. This is a great promise. It says that he will bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Whatever has turned to ashes in our life, whatever despair we might be feeling, know that there is a promise from God that there is a day of praise, that there is a garment of praise that we can wear, that there is a crown of beauty that is ours to own. 
How do we get to the day of joy? Well, on that Easter Sunday morning, two women, uh, Mary Magdalene was one of those women, and they go to the tomb with spices to anoint the body of Jesus. And what they find there is nobody. Nobody was expecting nobody. And so they go off and they're like the first evangelists for the early church and they go off um, and they go looking for the disciples to tell them what they have seen. And um, later on, Jesus appears to the disciples who are in this kind of lockdown situation. It says this, they were together with the door locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. You know, Jesus showed up to women, to the disciples. Over the 40 days that he was on the earth, he had meals with people. He goes fishing with people. He had several um, hour discussions with hundreds of people at one time. And you know, what happened in this moment as people see Jesus, this risen Jesus, they see the power of God. And um, it, these 11 disciples, they go off and they are fearless before they were behind locked doors. But once they know that death is not the end, they knew that not even death could stop the kingdom of heaven. They knew that not even death could stop the power of Jesus at work. And so they became filled with a boldness to go out, filled with joy. They were overjoyed, it said, when they saw the marks on Jesus' hands, when they saw him again. So how do we get to these days of joy? It's this way. It's we rely on the power of Jesus. That's how we get to these days of joy. It's because of his resurrection power, his power that brings life out of dead situations, his resurrection power. And the, these verses and what Jesus does here is an absolute game changer. In John 11, it says this, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? That is an invitation, an invitation right there from Jesus to say, do you believe this? If we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, the life-giving power of Jesus is available to us as it was to the disciples. That same joy that they experienced in knowing that death is not the end, when that is your perspective, that death is not the end, when you have an eternal perspective, then that is when joy comes because not even death can overcome Jesus. Death is defeated. If God can raise a dead body, he can raise whatever is dead in your life. You might be a believer today and some things are looking pretty dead in your life. We well, you know um, it can be faith, it can be love, can be pretty dead right now. Faith can be feeling pretty dead right now. Friendship and marriages our careers, they can be feeling pretty dead right now. But what I know is if this God can raise a body from the dead, he can do that with any area of our life. So I wanna pray for us this morning. You might not be a believer today and uh, maybe you wanna put your trust in Jesus for the first time. Maybe you wanna put Jesus at the center of your life and to ask him to have his way, to bring that day of joy to you. Maybe you're fed up with the grief pain, um, confusion, and you just want to put your trust in the middle of it all. You want to put your trust in Jesus today and you want to invite him into your life. You can do that today. So let's pray. So God, I want to pray for each person listening to this today, listening to the truth of your word and of this Easter story. And God, I want to pray for that same resurrection power to bring things back to life 
in our own lives. God, where we have experienced pain, where we have experienced confusion, Father, we want to walk towards that day of joy and know your joy in the middle of all of this confusion. And God, we do that by relying on your power, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead. So we want to invite that power into our living rooms, into our bedrooms today, into our homes, God. We pray for the power of Jesus to manifest itself among us, that Lord, we would know this joy that we are called to, this everlasting, eternal joy. And God, I pray for anyone who doesn't yet know you, who maybe today has sensed that stirring within them to know you and to put their trust in you. Father, I pray that you would visit them by the power of your Holy Spirit, wherever they are today. In the name of Jesus. Amen.